power. We all need it, we all want it. Some people crave it so much that they get drunk off it. Not exactly what I was trying to get at, but that is a very true statement. Sad, but true. It's what moves the world. It's what literally drives us. Now, as we advance, so does too the means and ways of power production towards cleaner and more efficient technologies. Now, I'm not saying that these technologies are extremely affordable. In fact, you don't really buy these technologies to save on money immediately. But there is something to be said about someone who will happily plant a tree knowing very well that he will not be able to see its shade. Yet that shade will actually benefit the future generation. So, with that said, this is the tech that powers the green cars of today. Now, they're not exactly the Eagle 5 Winnebago, sadly, nothing quite really is, or a DeLorean with a flux capacitor. God, I wish we had one of those. But times are changing, and these are the technologies that are leading that change on this episode of Behind the Desk. EV. Now, an EV, or electric vehicle, is a vehicle that is powered by batteries that are connected to an electric motor. Now, these batteries can be charged at home or at parking stations wherever available. Now, with regard to how long it takes to charge an EV, it really does depend on the power outlet itself. Let's take the Nissan Leaf, for example, which has a range of 243 kilometers. Now, if you were to charge that guy at home using a normal outlet, sadly, it'll pump in about eight kilometers per hour, which kinda sucks and spells out pain in the ass. But if you were to charge it on a commercial port, yeah, you'll have a full charge in 30 minutes. Popular EVs include the Nissan Leaf, the Mercedes EQC, not to be confused with ECQ, okay, and the Tesla Model S. Now, while many enthusiasts believe that the EVs are the death of exciting cars, I'd like to think, <laughs> eh, not exactly. Electric motors deliver power in an instant at the push of the throttle and all of the torque is let out. For instance, a Lamborghini Aventador S, zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.7 seconds with two seats. Tesla Model S, zero to 100 in 2.5 seconds with five seats. <sighs> Fuel cells. Now, fuel cells vehicles are powered by hydrogen. They use the hydrogen to power the electric motors in an electrochemical manner, or rather reaction, with the fuel cells. Now, if you need me to explain that any further, understand that it took me 17 takes just to simply say electrochemical reaction. So, no. But I will tell you this, the tech may be complicated, but the benefits of fuel cell vehicles is just, just like EVs, they have no emissions whatsoever, just a little bit of water and a little bit of air. Hydrogen, however, is relatively expensive to produce, even in developed countries that have FCEVs in their market. Hydrogen filling stations are few and, well, far in between. But unlike EVs, they fill up as quickly as petrol cars. By the time you get out of the baño, yeah, without shaking it more than three times, you're good to go! Now, the most popular and currently available fuel cell vehicles are the Toyota Mirai, Honda Clarity, and the Hyundai Nexo. On to hybrids. Now, however scarce they may be on Philippine roads, which is kind of sad, they are actually the most widespread green car available in our country. Now, hybrids are cars that utilize electric motors and internal combustion engines. And working together, what they do is improve fuel efficiency and lower CO2 emissions. This is achieved when using an electric motor at low speeds in situations like bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. The engine kicks in at around 25 kilometers per hour for most hybrid cars, or when needed to rapidly accelerate. In Manila, barely. The batteries cannot be charged externally, but rather through regenerative braking, where energy from slowing down or stopping is converted into power to charge the battery. The most prolific hybrid car has got to be the Toyota Prius. Prius in Latin actually means first, which is quite fitting. Well, of course I speak Latin. Doesn't everybody? Introduced in 1997, the family of the Prius has sold over 6 million units in the span of 20 years. Impressive. Other popular hybrid cars are the Hyundai Ioniq, the Honda CRZ, and the Toyota Corolla Altis Hybrid, which if you click on the link on screen, you can read about it on our website. Now, of the current lineup of green technologies, I would say that the PHEV or PHEV or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is probably the most versatile out of them all because it can substitute the electricity that it gets from the grid with gasoline. 
Now, PHEVs or PHEVs or whatever it is that we're going to call it, these batteries can actually recharge at home from a normal outlet or there's also the option, or rather not or, and there's also the option that it gets power from when the car slows down or stops through regenerative braking, which is actually pretty cool. Now, the first eye catcher of this tech was the BMW i8, which I'm told came out in Mission Impossible 4. And I'm thinking, really? There was a car in that movie? No, nothing there. Let's try again. Nope, didn't see a car there. You know what? Maybe the 2011 LA car show. Dude, where's the car? Seriously, anybody see a car? Now, funny enough, this episode of Behind the Desk is brought to you by the unexpected clear air that this quarantine has brought us. It's really quite surprising. Now, I'm not gonna turn into a tree hugger overnight. No, not at all. But it is quite nice to be able to look out of the window from the city and see the mountains that are so, so far away. And if this is the kind of power that new technology brings in, well, I don't mind getting drunk on that kind of power any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. We're finished! Yeah. Now you can scream all you want! <laughs>